Hello, this is for day 113 of Bible in one year and the Bible text, 2 Samuel chapter 16 to 18 and then Luke chapter 17 verses 20 to 37. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for another day. Actually, I've been recording for the same day. I'll be catching up for until, you know, April 30th. So help me, Lord. And but uh, thank you lord for the guidance for um the wisdom for every blessing that you've given us and pray that you would guide our every action help us lord to be more faithful to be more prayerful and uh to be to continually read your words so that you may know more about you and your messages for us and lord we ask for forgiveness for our sins and shortcomings um you know we got this backlog from Bible reading, so sorry about that. And um, uh, pray, Lord, that you enlighten us as we read your word, help us to apply them in our daily lives, and um, help us, Lord, to discern your will for us, what you want us to do with our lives, uh, to be more active in the ministry, to contribute more to the church and to be a soul winner helping the lost and sharing the gospel to others and thank you lord please we pray in jesus name amen okay second samuel chapter 16. and when david was a little past the top of the hill behold ziba the servant of mevabosheth met him with a couple of asses saddled, and upon them two hundred loaves of bread, and a hundred bunches of raisins, and a hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, What meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, The asses be for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine. Let such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, And where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abided at Jerusalem, for he said, Today shall the, house, shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Siva, Behold, thine are all that pertain unto my fellowship. And Siva said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. And when king David came to Bahurim, behold, then came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at, at David and at all the servants of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of Belial. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose seed thou hast reigned, and the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, thou art taken in but thy thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abishai the son of Zeroyah unto the king, Why should this dead so first, my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, What have I to do with you, he sons of Zeroyah? Let so let him first, because the Lord had said unto him, First David, who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold my son, which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone, and let him curse, for the Lord hath bitten him. It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction, and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men wept by the way, she may went along on the hillside over against him, and cursed as he went, and drew stones at him, and cast death. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves there. And Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahitophel fell with him. And it came to pass when Hushai the archite, David's friend, was come unto Absalom, that Hushai said unto Absalom, God save the king, God save the king. And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this a kindness to thy friend? Why wentest thou not with thy friend? And who shall say unto Absalom, Nay, but whom the Lord and these people and all the men of Israel choose, 
His will I be, and with him will I abide. And again, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? As I have served in the father's presence, so I, so will I be in thy presence. Then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Give counsel among you, what we shall do. And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubines, which he had left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou art aboard of thy father. Then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house. And Absalom went in at his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. Second Samuel chapter 17 Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out twelve thousand men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night. And I will come upon him while he is weary, and weak handed, and will make him afraid, and all the people that are with him shall flee. And I will smite the king only. And I will bring back all the people unto thee. The man whom thou seekest is as if all returned, so all the people shall be in peace. And the saying pleased Absalom well, and all the elders of Israel. Then said Absalom, Call now Hushai the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he saith. And when Hushai was come to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahithophel hath spoken after this manner. What shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. And Hushai said unto Absalom, The counsel that Ahithophel hath given is not good at this time. For, said Hushai, thou knowest thy father and his men, that they be mighty men, and they be chaffed in their minds as a bear robbed of her whelps in the field, and thy father is a man of war, and will not lodge for the people. Behold, he is hid now in some pit or in some other place. And it will come to pass, when some of them be o overthrown at the first, that whosoever heareth it will say, There is a slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. And he also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall utterly melt. For all Israel knoweth that thy father is a mighty man, and they which be with him are valiant men. Therefore I counsel that all Israel be generally gathered unto thee, from Dan even to Beersheba, as the sand that is by the sea for multitude, and that thou go to battle in thine own person. So shall we come upon him in some place where he shall be found, and ye will light upon him, as a Jew falleth on the ground, and of him, and of all the men that are with him, there shall not be left so much as one. Moreover, if he be gotten into a city, then shall all Israel bring ropes to that city, and we will draw it into the river, until there be not one small stone found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel, for the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel, to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. Then said Hushai and to Sadok and to Abiathar the priest, Thus and thus did Ahithophel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have I counseled. Now therefore sang quickly until David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the king be swallowed up and all the people that are with him. Now Jonathan and the high man stayed by Enrogel, for they might not be seen to come into the city, and the wench went and told them. And they went and told King David. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom. But they went both of them away quickly and came to a man's house in Bahurim, which had a well in his court, whither they went down. And the women took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground corn thereon, and the things and the thing was not known. And when Absalom's servant came to the women to the house, they said, Where is Ahimaaz and Jonathan? And the women said unto them, They began over the brook of water, and when they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after they were departed, that they came up out of the well, and went and told King David, and said unto David, Arise. <coughs> Arise and pass quickly over the water, for thus had a heat of counsel against you. Then David arose and all the people that were with him, and they passed over Jordan. 
By the morning light, there was not one of them that was not gone over Jordan. And when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose, and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order, and hanged himself and died, and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. Then David came to Mahanim, and Absalom passed over Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host, inside of Joab, which Amasa was a man's son, whose name was Itra, an Israelite, that went in to Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister to Zeroiah, Joab's mother. So Israel and Absalom pitched in the land of Gilead, and it came to pass, when David was come to Mahanim, that Shubi, the son of Nahash, of Braba, of the children of Ammon, and Bakir, the son of Amiel, of Lodebar, and Barzillai, the Gileadite of Rogelim, brought beds and basins, and earthen vessels, and wet and barley, and flour, and parched corn, and beans, and lentils, and parched pulse, and honey, and butter, and sheep, and cheese of kind for David, and for the people that were with him, to eat. For they said, The people is hungry, and weary, and thirsty in the wilderness. Second Samuel chapter 18 and David numbered the people that were with him, and set captains of thousands, and captains of hundreds over them. And David sent forth a third part of the people under the hand of Joab, and a third part under the hand of Abishai, the son of Saraiah, Joab's brother, and a third part under the hand of Etai, the Gittite. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. But the people answered, Thou shalt not go forth. For if we flee away, they will not care for us, neither if half of us die, will they care for us? But now thou art worth ten thousand of us, therefore now it is better that thou succour us out of the city. And the king said unto them, What seemeth you best, I will do. And the king stood by the gate side, and all the people came out by hundreds and by thousands. And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Vitai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young men, even with Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim, where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David, and there was there a great slaughter that day of twenty thousand men. For the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country, and the wood devoured more people, that day, then the sword devoured. And Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, and his head caught hold of the oak, and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him went away. And a certain man saw it, and told Joab, and, behold, and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. And Joab said unto the man that told him, And behold, thou sawest him, and why didst thou not smite him there to the ground? And I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle. And the man said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in mine hand, yet would I not put forth mine hand against the king's son. For in our hearing the king charged thee and Abishai and Etai, saying, Beware, <coughs> Beware that none touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise I have I should have brought falsehood against my own life, for there is no matter hid from the king, and thou thyself wouldest have set thyself against me. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee, and he took three darts in his hand, and thrust them through the heart of Absalom, while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. And ten young men that bare Joab's armor can pass about and smote Absalom, and slew him. And Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing after Israel, for Joab held back the people. And they took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood, and laid a very great heap of stones upon him. And all Israel fled, every one to his tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself a pillar which is in the king's dale. For he said, I have no sign to keep my name in remembrance, and he called the pillar after his own name. And it's, it is called unto this day Absalom's place. Then said Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, let me now run and bear the king tidings, how that the Lord had avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said unto him, Thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day. But this day thou shalt bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. 
Then said Joab to Cushi, Go tell the king what thou hast seen. And Cushi bowed himself unto Joab and rang. Then said the Hymas, the son of Sardoch, yet again to Joab, But howsoever like me, I pray thee, also run after Cushi. And Joab said, Wherefore wilt thou run, my son, seeing that thou hast no tidings ready? But howsoever said he, Let me run. And he said unto him, Run. Then the Hymas ran by the way of the plain, and overrun Cushi. And David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate, unto the wall, and lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, a man was running alone. And the watchman cried and told the king, and the king said, If he be alone, there is sightings in his mouth. And he came ap apace and drew near. And the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called unto the porter and said, Behold, another man running alone. And the king said, He also bringeth tithings. And the watchman said, Me think it the running of the foremost is like the running of the highness, the son of Sadak. And the king said, He is a good man, and cometh a good tidings. And the highness called and said unto the king, All is well. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king, and said, Blessed be the Lord thy God, which shall deliver up the men that lifted up their hand against my lord the king. And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahimaaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant, and me thy servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. And the king said unto him, Turn aside and stand here. And he turned aside and stood still, and behold, Cushi came, and Cushi said, Tidings, my lord the king, for the Lord hath avenged thee this day, of all them that rose up against thee. And the king said unto Cushi, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushi answered, The enemies of my lord the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as that young man is. And the king was much moved, and went up to the chamber over the gate, and wept. And as he went, thus he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, with God I have died for thee, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Okay, we now go to Luke chapter 17, and read verses 20 to 37. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say, See you, see here, or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven, shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things, and be rejected of his, of his generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in, it, in the house, let him not come down to take it away, and he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken, and the other left. And he answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Alright, so we're done for the Bible reading for day 113. For the reflection and something to share, um, I think the last part of Luke 17 is about the rapture. So, you know, when... In the second coming of Christ, not exactly the second coming already, but just the rapture. You know, because after the rapture, there would be the tribulation, and after the tribulation, that would be the second coming of Christ. 
And so during the rapture, the, all the Christians, believers of God, children of God, would be, you know, taken and they would meet the Lord Jesus in the year and then they would be brought to heaven. And there would be, you know, a celebration, reward, giving of rewards, and then, you know, glorifying God, essentially. But there would be those people, the unbelievers, who would remain on earth and they would go through the tribulation period, which would be quite chaotic and a lot of people would suffer through that. And so, you know, not a good thing. So as much as possible, uh, Christians are really spreading the gospel, sharing the gospel and trying to win more souls so that um, they would be saved. Okay, essentially there is that particular tribulation on earth, but if you died before then and you're not saved, then there is that other, you know, there's hell and then there's heaven. If you're not a believer of God, then you're going to hell. If what the Bible teaches us, yeah, right. Okay, and then anyway, going back to Second Samuel chapter sixteen to eighteen. So again, um, David, no matter how many times Saul tried to kill him, he still respected him. And then this time with his son Absalom trying to overthrow him, trying to kill him, but David did not desire to kill his own son, right? And so regardless of uh, Absalom pursuing after him, he did not uh, fought him and he wanted him to be safe. And so he was really uh, devastated and was really saddened when he heard that Absalom already died, you know, his son. Although David had a lot of sons, right? And essentially his heir or his successor was Solomon, right? Okay, so I think that's a very good trait. Long suffering, right? No matter how many times uh, someone tried or did bad things against you, and if you truly love them, then you would not raise your hand against them, and you would still wish them to be safe, and you still wish them to be alive and living well, right? So let's be like David in that sense. Okay, so that's it for this one. Again, this is day 113, a Bible in one year, and we've read Second Samuel chapter 16 to 18, and then Luke 17, verses 20 to 37. Thank you, and God bless.